I am a massive fan of farming games. I have no idea why I love them so much, just like I have no idea why I love salad cream on toast or tomato sauce sandwiches, but there we go. I love farming games, Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley, Farming Simulator, all of them. And it's games like Farming Simulator 17, having now officially taken the FIFA approach to game naming, that it reminds me that it's okay not to care about the social aspect of farming games. I don't need to run around throwing gifts into strangers' faces in hopes that one of them will succumb to Stockholm Syndrome and marry me, and then spend the rest of our miserable digital lives sitting in my house giving me terrible farming advice and never actually actually helping out on the bloody farm. Farming Simulator 17 does this whilst also reminding you of the sheer epicness of owning and cultivating your own land. Don't believe me? Check out the trailer! Right? No! Farming Simulator lets you experience the tranquility of preparing your fields, planting your crops and harvesting them. It lets you meander around your farm whilst tending to your animals, knowing full well that Percy Pig and his mates over there are probably not going to make it to the end of the year without being shipped off to the Walls factory. I mean, at the end of the day, you're a farmer. That's your living. So that about wraps it up, right? I obviously love Farming Simulator 17 so much that I'm holding it in the same esteem as Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon. Well, not quite. Farming Simulator 17 isn't without its flaws and the big old list of what I'm going to call the wish it could do's. Firstly, you seem to play as a strangely invincible ghost farmer who never needs to rest, eat, sleep or ever runs out of stamina. I mean, at times, when I was running around, I was keeping up with the local traffic in the town with no problems. Unless this is Superman's early years simulator, something is seriously wrong. The world is another thing. The farming simulator world has always felt large enough. There are plenty of places to sell your produce, plenty of other plots of land to purchase, and lots of trees to cut down if you can somehow figure out the precise goddamn angle with which to use your chainsaw. Seriously, Ghost Superman, it's a chainsaw, not a scalpel. The problem with the world of farming simulator in general, especially so with Farming Simulator 17, is that it feels like you're kind of trapped in somebody else's idea of a simulator. It's less of a living, breathing world and more of a cold, harsh environment only inhabited by Johnny Cab. I know exactly what I'm going to sound like, but here goes, I'm going to do it anyway. After playing Farming Simulator 15, I missed out on 16 due to having an irrational distrust of even numbers, I already had a big wish list of things I hoped that Giant Software would fulfil and fix and do and implement, but nothing. Well, so, no, not really. Almost nothing seems to have changed. Granted, you can now play as a female farmer, which is... Progress? Sorry, that isn't supposed to sound negative, but touting female playable characters these days is like saying that games now come in glorious Technicolor. Quite frankly, it's something that should have been there from the get-go. But moving on, you can always listen to your radio in your tractor, and that's something. It's actually quite good, to be honest with you. Not that I'll be able to show you, thanks YouTube. But trust me, it isn't terrible if a bit GTA San Andreas I only have three songs and we'll play them repeatedly sort of a way. That thing where you can scale literally any tree in the game is still there. There isn't any damage against any of the vehicles, which is just plain weird since I'm tearing around the villas like a goddamn lunatic, crunching the fenders of anyone near me. Something feels incredibly false about the whole thing. I'm not asking for Euro Truck Simulator levels of realism, but when I drive a tractor with a trailer full of grain, grain through a bumpy terrain and then dot off a cliff, I kind of expect the game to go, oh sorry mate, you drove it like you stole it so you've lost half your stock. And even after this escapade, I got my tractor lodged between a tree and a rock. And upon manoeuvring out of said rock and a bark place, I found myself accidentally reversing into the lake. The lake. 
A simple message popped up asking me not to drive too deeply into the water and teleported Ghost Superman onto the shore, leaving me to safely teleport my vehicles back to my farm where I could also teleport back to them. Something anything to let me feel like I should care about the maintenance of my vehicles, repair fees, maintenance every X amount of miles, takes out of commission for a couple of days, something, anything. You also weirdly can't help but feel like a little bit of a tyrant in Farming Simulator 17. You have the option of hiring helpers on your farm, something that if you're smart you'll do a lot of to be perfectly honest, and I'll lose about 200 to 500 money, you get to choose the non-interchangeable currency per day, for something that you can then walk over to your farmer friend next door and get paid 15 grand for. It's mental. It makes earning money a bit more like a triviality rather than a reward. I've gone a bit off the deep end with this review, but I want to say I really want to love Farming Simulator 17, like I wanted to love Farming Simulator 15, but there are so many holes in the simulation aspect of this that the game ends up looking a little bit like Swiss cheese. It's an enjoyable and really rather splendid looking game if you're willing to suspend your disbelief for a while until you get used to all the cardboard cutouts and fake scenery. 